Good morning. This is Katherine Jones at UNMC in Omaha. I have with me Vic Victoria Kennel. She is our graduate student in industrial organizational psychology uh, on our Capture Falls grant program. And she is going to present for us this morning uh, our next webinar on best practices for effective meetings. And we have seen over and over how important it is the impact that the fall risk reduction team has had on changing structures and processes in your hospitals. And Victoria will share with you this morning one of the key uh, elements of that fall risk reduction team, which is how to conduct an effective meeting. Thank you, Victoria. Okay, good morning, everyone. As Catherine said, I'm Vicki Pennell, and our webinar today will be on best practices for effective meetings, specifically focusing on how fall risk reduction teams can conduct effective go. <laughs> uh, so as always, we'll acknowledge uh, that our project is supported by uh, the grant from the Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality, and the content is solely the responsibility of the authors and does not necessarily represent the official views of the Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality. So the purpose of our webinar today is first to review baseline data from the 2011 hospital survey that's specific to fall risk reduction teams, but also that's directly related to conducting effective meetings for your fall risk reduction team. Second, we'll talk about how you can use a meeting as an organizational tool to enhance your fall risk reduction team and your program. Uh, we'll describe lessons learned from the observations of the fall risk reduction team meetings that we conducted on our initial site visit. And then finally, we'll discuss some best practices and how to conduct an effective meeting to help su support this continued progress for your team, but also for your fall risk reduction program. So to give you a brief introduction, you've seen this slide several times, I think, for every single webinar we've conducted so far. Uh, but because there are so many factors that play a role in fall risk and the incidences of patient falls, we're encouraging your hospitals to create this interdisciplinary uh, fall prevention team, fall risk reduction team, and using your team to coordinate your fall risk reduction program. So the literature shows that fall risk has been reduced in studies where interprofessional team members were actively engaged in fall risk reduction efforts. Uh, so this includes having your team composed of members from different clinical backgrounds, sharing their unique experiences with the goal of improving fall risk reduction in your hospital. And we view the fall risk reduction team as just one piece of a multi-team system for the fall risk reduction process. So the role your fall risk reduction team plays is essentially to be a coordinating team. So your role is to be responsible for developing fall risk reduction policies and procedures, but also holding that core bedside team responsible and accountable for implementing those processes. So today we'll uh, first kind of go through some of the evidence that we gathered from that initial fall risk assessment, and then we'll also provide you with a lot of research-based evidence on how to conduct effective meetings. So from the 2011 fall survey that we conducted in Nebraska hospitals, we conducted this survey to examine the structures, processes, and outcomes that were related to fall risk reduction. And overall, 70 of 83 of those general community hospitals in Nebraska responded to our survey, um, some of which were critical access hospitals, 86% of those responded, um, and then 78% of those that responded were non-critical access hospitals. So the first question that we asked in our survey was, who is accountable for implementing your fall risk reduction program? And again, you've seen this slide, I think, through every webinar we have so far. But it's so important to note that one of the major findings was that critical access hospitals tended to have uh, fewer teams accountable for their fall risk reduction program when compared to non-critical access hospitals who had well over two-thirds of the hospitals had teams accountable for their fall risk reduction program. But this is important to note because what we found in this survey is that hospitals who had a fall risk reduction team had the lowest total fall and injurious fall rates compared to hospitals where either one single person or no one was accountable for the fall risk reduction program. So simply having a team in and of itself was important to reducing total fall and injurious fall rates in the hospitals. 
Another question that we asked was, uh, does your fall risk reduction team integrate evidence from multiple disciplines to continually improve fall risk reduction efforts? And what we found is that those hospitals that had teams who engaged in integrating that multidisciplinary evidence had significantly lower total fall rates and injurious fall rates in their hospitals compared to those teams who less frequently integrated multidisciplinary evidence. So this further supports that need to have a fall risk reduction team that's composed of members from unique clinical backgrounds who can bring all of that unique, uh, unique perspectives and unique information and their perspectives of falls and integrate that into your fall risk reduction team and program. So Vicki, this is Catherine. Is it accurate to say then that those hospitals that had teams that integrated multiple evidence had fall rates that were one-fifth those of hospitals that did not have teams that integrated evidence? Is that correct to say? Yeah, that, I would say that would be accurate. Okay, just wanted to make that point. And then finally, um, another question that we asked, and I don't think we've talked about this yet in any of our webinars, um, is we address this concept of, it's called team reflexivity. So we asked the respondent, does your fall risk reduction team um, engage in any of the following activities. So collecting and analyzing data regarding your fall risk reduction program and outcomes, modifying your fall risk reduction policies and procedures based on this outcomes data, and then conducting a root cause analyses of injurious falls. So what we found is that hospitals who had teams that engaged in each one of these behaviors um, had significantly lower injurious fall rates per 1,000 patient days in their hospital. So what this suggests is just having a team can be related to reduce fall rates in your hospital, but it's really the activities that the team are engaging in, sharing that interdisciplinary evidence, engaging in these reflexive behaviors and thinking about the policies and procedures in your hospital, using that data to modify fall risk reduction practices, these key team behaviors are really related to reduced, um, reduced fall rates in the hospital. And then finally, uh, on our hospital site visit, we conducted interviews with each of the fall risk reduction teams. And some of the preliminary evidence that we found um, related to things like this need for better communication, both within and across departments in the hospitals. Uh, the need for education and training on fall risk reduction policies and interventions, uh, having more accountability for the fall risk reduction processes and outcomes, uh, this need for actively reflecting on our fall data, understanding what our fall data is telling us and using that to modify our fall risk reduction practices, and then finally just not enough time to dedicate to all of the effort it takes to engage in a, an effective fall risk reduction program. So as a coordinating team, your interdisciplinary fall risk reduction team um, is holding meetings. You started meeting as a team to address a lot of these issues that are very critical to a successful fall risk reduction program and to sustain those reduced fall rates in your hospitals. So one component of your fall risk reduction team's process is to hold an effective fall risk reduction team meeting. So you can continue to effectively coordinate and manage and implement the fall risk reduction program in your hospital. So that leads us to talk about meetings. So what is the purpose of a meeting? Um, some people might say meetings are boring and I hate going to meetings. <laughs> but really meetings can be also be perceived as an organizational tool. So we hold meetings um, essentially to gather individuals together and to communicate about some particular issue uh, with the purpose of helping you to attain organizational goals. So your fall risk reduction team is meeting with the goal of improving your fall risk reduction process in your hospital. So we can hold meetings for a variety of, of purposes and there's a lot of desired outcomes for meetings. So the most, uh, the most prevalent one is communication and information sharing. So we hold meetings so that we each can share our perspectives with the goal of reaching the goal that we have for the meeting. Uh, we can hold meetings to engage in problem solving. We can hold meetings to make decisions. Uh, you could consider education and training interventions essentially as meetings 
with the purpose of learning something new. You can hold meetings for action planning, and then obviously something people love about meetings is you can socialize during those meetings, get to know your team members. But as many of you have probably experienced, not every meeting is very desirable or very effective. So the research on meetings shows that on average, over 50% of meeting time is often wasted or misused in some fashion. So what this really leads to is lost time, lost effort, and essentially lost resources when uh, your staff members are spending time in meetings where they're not really accomplishing anything or really meeting the purpose of the, the reason why they're meeting. But the research also shows that when teams hold effective meetings, uh, that can lead to desired team and organizational outcomes. So effective meetings can help your team to better reach the team's goals, the purpose of the team, but also can help to reach these overall overarching organizational goals that, the, that your hospital has as well. And what's interesting is that uh, research also shows that in when individuals feel like the meetings they attend are very effective, that also directly relates, relates to their perceptions of job satisfaction. So individuals are more satisfied with their work and more satisfied with their jobs when they perceive the meetings that they attend to be very effective. So really having an effective meeting can help your team to shape both effective team processes and reaching your team goals, but they can be very beneficial to reach organizational goals or the goals of your hospital as well. So what we'd like to talk about next is the fall risk reduction team meeting observations. So some of you, uh, for I believe it was 13 of the 19 hospitals uh, that we visited in our initial site visit, uh, some of those hospitals held fall risk reduction team meetings. And if you, some of you may remember that one of our team members sat in and observed that fall risk reduction team meeting. So we'd like to kind of debrief you about what we looked at um, during that team observation and kind of explain to you some of the findings that we found from our observation. So the purpose of that fall risk reduction team observation was for us to examine both the context of the fall risk reduction team meeting, but also the content of the meeting. So we looked at three things. We looked first at the quality of the discussion, so what was talked about during the fall risk reduction team meeting. We looked at the extent of participation in the discussion. So of the team members who were present, who participated in the meeting, and was the meeting perceived to be open and supportive of open participation? Okay. And then finally, we looked at the meeting structure component. So how was the meeting designed? What was the structural process of the meeting? So to summarize the findings, are what we sort of observed from the discussion quality component is that uh, of the 13 teams, 10 of them, so 77%, used data to drive the team's discussion. So that data was in forms of fall reports, uh, other incident reports, and then some of it was anecdotal evidence of a recent fall that wasn't necessarily documented, but uh, was described by one of the team members. Uh, overall, nine of the 13 teams, so about 69%, discussed different causes of falls that occurred. Uh, almost or every single team, all 13 of the teams, discussed different fall prevention strategies. And then finally, 12 of the 13 teams discussed or proposed changes uh, for their fall risk reduction policies, procedures, um, or the structure of the fall risk reduction teams. The next thing we looked at was discussion participation. So in 11 of the 13 teams, so about 85% of the teams, every team member that was present participated at least once in the discussion, which was great because we're trying to encourage you to have an interdisciplinary fall risk reduction team where each of the team members can share their own unique clinical experiences and perspectives about fall risk reduction. And then overall, we perceive the atmosphere to be very open in each of the team meetings. So an open uh, atmosphere is very important to encourage individuals to participate. So again, because you have an interdisciplinary team, um, and each, me each team member can have their own information coming from their own unique silo in the hospital, 
uh, we thought that this was great that every single team had that open environment so that it encouraged participation from every team member. And finally, and what we found interesting um, was looking at the way the meetings were structured. So when you look at the graph here, what we found was that um, six of the 13 teams, so a little bit less than half of the teams, had an agenda uh, that they used to drive their fall risk reduction team meeting. Um, only four of the 13 teams reviewed the team's objectives. So they talked about the goal of their fall risk reduction team and the objectives that they had for the meeting that we were observing. And then finally, five of the 13 teams uh, clearly articulated the team's goal of fall risk reduction. So to summarize what we observed in the team observation, um, first we want to continue uh, to we want to continue to um, support you and encourage you to use evidence to drive discussions about the causes of falls, fall prevention strategies, and policy and procedure changes. Um, so this goes back to that concept of team reflexivity that we talked about earlier. So using actual fall data, using the numbers that you have, using your fall reports, the post-fall huddle reports uh, that teams are, are filling out, and using that to drive um, those discussions about how you can modify and change your fall prevention policies and procedures. Uh, second, we want to continue to encourage you uh, to encourage participation from all team members. Uh, so it's very important that each of the teams can integrate that evidence from multiple disciplines. That's only going to strengthen uh, the, the fall prevention policies and procedures and the practices that you use in your hospital. Uh, but finally, um, and where uh, the rest of the webinar will take us, is uh, helping you to come up with ways to design and structure your fall risk reduction team meeting so that you can maximize the time that you have for those meetings um, and to help you improve the effectiveness of the meeting, because um, that will only help you to improve the effectiveness of the fall risk reduction program in and of itself. So I think this is a good point uh, before I go into some of the best practices for structuring and conducting effective meetings to see if anyone has questions at this point. Okay, if there aren't any questions, we'll go ahead and move on to uh, looking at the evidence-based best practices in conducting effective meetings. So why would we want to take the time to design and structure a meeting? So most people don't like to attend meetings anyway, and they perceive meetings to take up a lot of time during their workday. So why would it be important to take the extra time outside of the meeting to structure and design an effective meeting? Well, the research literature on effective meetings shows that the way in which a meeting is designed is very critical to conducting and executing successful meetings. And the research also shows that when teams constructively interact during their meetings, uh, they spend most of their time collaborating to problem solve and to action plans in their meetings, those team members tend to be more satisfied with the meetings that they attend. They also tend to be more productive in reaching the goals of the team and the goals of the meeting. But most importantly, uh, research shows that over time, teams that have more effective meetings are much more likely to meet the goals of the team and the organization. So there are benefits to um, taking that time to design and structure and hold effective meetings. So what we'll focus on today are those structural and design components of effective meetings. So how do you structure and set up your meeting in a way to maximize the time that you have, but also to help conduct an effective meeting? So we'll talk about five different things that your team can use uh, when you're designing a meeting. The first is having a formal meeting agenda. Uh, we'll talk about the importance of taking minutes during the meeting. Um, we'll talk about the importance of starting and ending on time. We'll talk about the role that the meeting leader plays um, in conducting an effective meeting. And then we'll talk about uh, how critical it is to have a quick follow-up and review or summary of the meeting. Um, at the end of every meeting. So why create a formal meeting agenda? Well, what the meeting agenda does is it helps to communicate both the purpose of the meeting 
in the structure of the meeting. So in a formal meeting agenda, you want to include things like where is the meeting? Where is our team supposed to meet to attend the meeting? Uh, what time is the meeting so that everyone makes sure that they shows up that they can show up on time for the meeting? Uh, what are the goals and objectives of our team? So our your your goal, kind of your overall objective, is to improve your fall risk reduction program. Uh, and then what are our agenda items? So yeah, the agenda items really drive what you'll be discussing in the meeting. But it also talk, like helps you uh, organize in what sequence do we need to talk about them. So which items are very critical or important to talk about? Obviously, you want to put those first. Uh, some of the items that maybe you could wait to another meeting, but you could get to them if you have time, you would want to sequence those later on in your agenda. So here we provided some examples of agenda items. And it's important to note that some of these items uh, may be standing agenda items. So they may be things that you talk about every month, uh, maybe every quarter, or it's something that you would do on a yearly or an annual basis. So it's important to uh, add that team goal and the purpose of the meeting so that the team uh, can kind of quickly reflect on, here's the mission of our team, this is the goal of our team, and this is why we're taking the time out of our work day to have this meeting. Uh, another agenda item or something you could even use uh, um, in addition to your agenda is your action plan. So every team has an action plan. Um, and you can take some of those action items that you're working on and add those to your agenda or supplement your agenda with the action plan. So you can talk about some ongoing new action items that you're using to improve the fall risk reduction structure and process. Uh, but you could also provide an opportunity to address some of those new activities that have been maybe sitting on your uh, sitting on your action plans, but you have yet to address those with your hospital. Um, probably a, a standing agenda item, something that um, you'll have on maybe a monthly or quarterly basis will be. The review of fall reports and post-fall huddle forms. Um, so it's important, obviously, to go through those so you can see, um, kind of go through, maybe do a root cause analysis if you want to, um, or just a quick look through to look for patterns and falls. So uh, is it because uh, bed, bed alarms aren't getting turned on or people are not using gate belts properly? Um, or maybe we need to do a better job of uh, handing off fall risk information uh, to other individuals in the hospital. Um, along with that, you can also uh, have uh, discussions about fall rates in your hospital. That could be an agenda item. And then obviously different fall prevention strategies. Uh, new strategies or maybe a way to update current strategies uh, that you're working on. Um, Obviously, a review of your fall policies and procedures could be another action item as well. Uh, then finally, uh, any education, training, and evaluation or auditing uh, projects that you're working on, those could be agenda items as well. And another thing that the research literature shows in relation to formal meeting agendas is that if you can provide the agenda before the meeting to your team members, this will help you to maximize the efficiency of your meeting. Uh, so by sending the meeting agenda to your team members ahead of time, it's helping to communicate that purpose and the goal of your fall risk reduction team meeting before the meeting even begins. And it can also encourage uh, team member preparation for the meeting. So if I have to come to a meeting and I'm supposed to be talking about something um, or talking about a project, by seeing that on the agenda, that will hopefully encourage me to do that work and continue to work on that before the next meeting. But providing a meeting agenda ahead of time can also help uh, your team members to feel more satisfied with the meeting. Because they come into the meeting kind of with a clear idea or even a shared mental model of what needs to be accomplished during the fall risk reduction team meetings. So here we provided an example of one of our collaborating hospitals of a meeting agenda that this hospital used for one of their fall risk reduction team meetings. Uh, what's important to note here is you can see at the top uh, that they have uh, the team name, so it's the capture team agenda. They have the meeting date, the time of the meeting, uh, the location where the meeting was held. They have each of their 
action items or their agenda items listed there in order. Um, and we de-identified this, but you can also see, for example, on number three, um, they had the name of the project and then the individual uh, who was supposed to be talking about that project. And then finally, what, would, what was great is that at the end of their agenda, they provided information about upcoming meetings. So the team members could try to schedule their time or their work around the next meetings to make sure that they can attend the meeting. Another important component of conducting an effective meeting is having meeting minutes. Uh, so what meeting minutes do is they record meeting activity and the progress that your team is making uh, during the meeting. So by simply having someone take minutes, that communicates to your team members that the meeting activities are actually important because someone is taking the time to go through and record the decisions that are being made and what is being discussed in the meeting. So the minutes would include things like what topics did we discuss, uh, what, did we, what decisions did we make, what updates are we going to make to projects, or what new projects are we going to decide to work on. And having the minutes can help facilitate future activities, like continuing to work on your action plan, uh, but also can help you to develop the agenda for the next meeting. And in the minutes, you can include things like what action is required for the next meeting, who is responsible for that action, and by what time are they supposed to complete that activity. And finally, probably most importantly, uh, having minutes can increase the likelihood that the people attending the meeting will honor agreements made during the meeting because you have that written record of what decisions were made and what things need to be accomplished for the next meeting. And probably most importantly, uh, knowing the hectic schedules that a lot of individuals have on your fall risk reduction team, uh, for those team members who maybe cannot make it to a meeting, having those meetings to communicate to those team members what was discussed, what decisions were made, and then what they're responsible for completing for the next meeting. So we provided another example here. Uh, this is from the same collaborating hospital of the meeting minutes that they used. Um, and this matches the meeting for the agenda that we presented. So you can see here uh, that this hospital sort of took their agenda and then just added the minutes directly to the agenda. So now they have a written record of not only what was on their agenda for that meeting, but what things were discussed, what next steps they'll be taking, um, and who's responsible for, uh, for doing those activities for the next meeting. Another important component of meetings, uh, which seems pretty obvious, but it's very important, is starting and ending the meeting on time. Uh, so this is important because it encourages uh, the team members to come to the meeting uh, before it's supposed to start. So it encourages punctuality in attending the meetings. Um, it also allows attendees to schedule their meetings around their work tasks. So essentially what this does is meetings become less disruptive when they start and end on time. Um, and we know that time is, is of the essence and it's something that a lot of members of your fall risk reduction team don't necessarily have a lot of. So by really uh, you know, starting and ending the meetings on time, your team members can come to the meeting and know and as soon as the meeting is over, they can go, uh, go back to their work and continue what they're doing. And finally, by starting and ending on time, it promotes the value of the meeting. So it communicates to your team members that you not only value their time, uh, but that the team members will value the time that they spend in the fall risk reduction team meetings. And not surprisingly, uh, team members or people who attend meetings find those meetings to be more effective uh, simply when they, uh, they actually start and end on time. Another very important component of conducting an effective meeting um, is the, the role that the leader plays uh, in leading your interdisciplinary fall risk reduction team meeting. So as you would expect, a lot of research shows that the behaviors of the leader during the meeting can directly influence uh, people's satisfaction with the meetings but also how productive and effective the meeting is. So the role of the meeting leader is to do things like direct the pace of the meeting in relation to the amount of time you have for your fall risk reduction team meeting. They really set, the meeting leader really sets the direction for the team meeting. 
and then can help uh, guide the team to attain the goals um, and the objectives that you have for your fall risk reduction team meeting. A very important role that the leader plays is to encourage participation and decision making in the team meeting. And again, we'll go back to how important that is with the interdisciplinary nature of your fall risk reduction team. So if the leader um, is very attuned to making sure that every team member is sharing the perspectives, um, you'll be able to get some unique perspectives on fall risk reduction that you may not necessarily get if those members weren't encouraged to participate in the meeting. And finally, the team leader plays a very critical role by summarizing all of the decisions that were made in the meeting. We'll talk about this a little bit more in that follow-up and recap section of meeting effectiveness. So a question you're probably wondering is who should lead the meeting? So by now, each of your fall risk reduction teams probably have a designated leader or a chair of your fall risk reduction team. Um, and that is great because you do need someone to uh, sort of lead or be responsible for coordinate, coordinating everything for your fall risk reduction team meetings. But it's also important to note that the person who leads the meeting um, can change over time. So let's say some of the agenda items are directly related to activities that the physical therapist is doing or the pharmacist is doing for your fall risk reduction program. Um, it is very appropriate to have that individual be the leader for that team meeting uh, since they are the ones who have been uh, doing the most work or will be sharing uh, information about the projects that they have been working on. So changing up the leader for your fall risk reduction team meetings can also help to engage different members of the fall risk reduction team. But regardless of who you decide to have leave the meeting, it's very important that you clarify the roles of the leaders and the team members. Uh, so it would be very difficult to have a meeting if every fall risk reduction team member is trying to lead the meeting um, and act as the leader. So just make sure that the role of the leader or the designated leader for your, uh, for your meeting is clarified and that we know what the expectations are of the individual who is leading the meeting, but also the expectations of the team members who are participating in the meeting as well. Finally, we'll get to the last uh, important process of conducting effective meetings, which is the, the activity of following up and reviewing once your meeting is over. Uh, so this is something that the leader can initiate or another team member can initiate, uh, but this helps to tie together all of the accomplishments and all of the decisions that were made in the meeting. Um, and by engaging in this process, you can make sure that you have everything down in your meeting minutes um, and perhaps for your next meeting agenda uh, that you make sure that you want to address. Um, by engaging in this follow-up and review process, too, you can assign tasks uh, to accomplish for the next meeting. So you can use kind of the WWW question of who's doing what and by when. Um, and that can help you to coordinate uh, the activities that will go on before your next fall risk reduction team meeting. And then finally, like I mentioned earlier, that follow-up and review process can be very important for setting the agenda items or action items for the next meeting. So it clarifies what's expected of all of the team members before the next meeting um, and will hopefully encourage those activities to be completed before you have your next fall risk reduction team meeting. But what's most important, and to kind of go back to what we talked about earlier, um, is that these team meetings that you're holding function not only as a tool that your fall risk reduction team is using to develop your fall risk reduction program, but meetings also are helping you to facilitate that team reflexivity process. So when we conducted our first site visit, uh, many of you probably remember, if you're members of the fall risk reduction team, you probably remember completing a team reflexivity assessment that we gave you prior to the team interviews on our site visit. And that assessment included items like our fall risk reduction team reviews and modifies our team goals and objectives. We discuss strategies and methods to implement our fall risk reduction program. We make decisions that match the goals and needs of our fall risk reduction program. And you also uh, rated your team on the extent to which your team is working together effectively to implement their fall risk reduction program. 
So we're revisiting this concept of team reflexivity again uh, because research shows that uh, teams, just like your fall risk reduction team, um, teams are more likely to learn from errors and mistakes and then go on to adapt their actions to minimize future risks when they engage in activities like reflecting on outcome data, reflecting on your fall rates, reflecting on uh, fall, fall reports, post-fall hunter reports, but also reflecting on those policies and procedures that produce those outcomes. So it's important for your team to remember that your fall risk reduction team um, is playing such an important role in fall prevention because your team itself, by engaging in a lot of these reflexive behaviors um, and conducting effective meetings, you're coordinating and facilitating not only organizational learning about fall prevention, uh, you're engaging in innovative behaviors, coming up with new methods to reduce fall risk in your hospital, but overall, by engaging in these reflexive behaviors through your meetings, you're improving patient safety through your, your hospital's fall risk reduction program. Uh, so by designing and conducting these effective meetings and engaging in these reflexive behaviors, you're really playing a critical role for patients in your hospital in improving your fall risk reduction program. So I'll quickly summarize what we talked about um, in our meeting, and then we'll open it up for some questions. So kind of the overall summary of our webinar today um, is to remind you of how important your fall risk reduction team is uh, to creating and coordinating and managing an effective fall risk reduction program. And knowing that taking the time to structure and design your fall risk reduction team meeting uh, will, help your, your help, will help your team establish clear and effective fall risk reduction policies and interventions it will help your team um, and members of your hospital to reflect upon and improve fall risk reduction practices and increase organizational learning that's occurring in your hospital. But most importantly, it will help your team reach that goal of reducing and sustaining low fall rates in your hospital. So at this point, um, I'd be interested, I'd like to open it up for questions, but I'd also be interested to hear from um, those of you on our webinar today what other meeting best practices are you using? What things are you doing in your meetings that uh, seem to be making your meetings more effective or seem to be helping your team uh, to make a lot of progress toward a lot of your fall risk reduction goals? Just a reminder, star six to mute or unmute your line. And this is your time to share with uh, Vicki and, and everybody else on the call uh, what you're doing in your team meetings that you feel is helping you to achieve those goals of improving fall risk reduction in your facilities. Vicki, this is Garrett Van Brocklin, Beatrice Community Hospital. I have a quick question. Sure. My question is, regarding meeting minutes, do you have a particular format or a favorite template that you like to use for meeting minutes? The reason I ask is I've seen minutes from meetings that maybe five, six pages long, and I've seen minutes from meetings that are summarized into about a paragraph. And I always feel like if the minutes are too lengthy, it reduces the uh, possibility or the probability that uh, they'll be reviewed by those attending. And I just wanted to get your thoughts on that. And I'm always looking for a really good minute format. It sounds like a funny question, but um, I think I think that format that you put the minutes in is important. Oh, I definitely agree. Um, what I really like to see is to uh, have those meeting minutes kind of be integrated in with the agenda. Um, and I completely agree with what you said. If those meeting minutes are five, six, seven pages long, um, no one's going to read them. I wouldn't read them if they were that long. So what I think is important is to have uh, the individual who's taking the minutes. You know, they may take lengthy minutes, but if you have a team member or the individual who took the minutes, go back and try to kind of shorten those minutes, make it, uh, you know, make sure that you include the information that's very pertinent to understanding what decisions were made, uh, but cut out some of the extra uh, information that's not relevant to the decision. That's a good way to uh, minimize how long those minutes are, but make sure that you have the important information. Um, so I would recommend adding those directly to the agenda so you can have not only what the agenda item was, but maybe some bullet points about what decisions were made, 
um, and the things that are most important. Garrett, this is Catherine, and um, it's, you know, I sit here reflecting on how I run meetings for the Capture Falls project. And we do have a template that we use for uh, meeting uh, minutes and agenda. And uh, it's in a table format. It's got a topic, um, who's accountable for it, by when they're accountable, that sort of thing. <clears throat> and I'll be happy to send you the template. And in all um, transparency, uh, this template I borrowed from uh, Amy Goldman at Madonna Rehab Hospital. So I'll be happy to forward that template that we use here in our Capture Falls project to you. That would be great. Thank you. You're welcome. And I think that's a great example of how structure dictates process. If the meeting agenda and minutes are in a very structured format that people can follow, they're more likely to actually review them and follow up on the to-do items they've been assigned. Other questions for Vicki about uh, effective meeting practices or suggestions that you can share. I mean, we all have attended meetings our whole life. And um, if you can share your thoughts with how we can better make um, meetings reflect our teamwork practices. What are those things that make you just dread going to a meeting? I dread going to a meeting where there is no agenda and I don't know what's going to be discussed, and then I'm afraid uh, it's just going to be a waste of my time. So I, I really appreciate that, that agendas are important. Uh, anybody else want to share either what makes meetings effective or what makes you dread a meeting? I'm sure there are people out there that there's not you don't look forward to every meeting you go to. <laughs> This is Tammy. I don't look forward to going to meetings where I know the speaker is lengthy and drawn out and doesn't get to the point. If I'm, and then they're trying to explain things too much. Yeah, definitely. So, um, and that's where it's really important to make sure that, uh, you know, you have the agenda with the specific action items um, and that you also encourage other team members to participate because no one like their who has a Dilbert cartoon I really wanted to add to the slides uh, where I can't remember what they said, but it was something about here comes our next hour meeting and it's 58 minutes of listening to the leader just drawn on and on and on and on. So it's important to make sure that you allocate appropriate amounts of time for the things that need to be talked about uh, within your meetings. So Vicki, this is Catherine. So how much time would you say um, the meeting leader needs to spend preparing for a meeting in order for it to go smoothly? Because I think that's part of the problem. Mm -hmm. It kind of depends on the length of the meeting, uh, what items will be added to your agenda. Um, the first time you're getting started, if you're not used to using an agenda, you're not used to using minutes, um, I mean, maybe give yourself 30 minutes, an hour to prepare for the meeting. But once you get a process down and a process that works for you and your team, um, I can't see it taking more than, you know, 10, 15 minutes to get the agenda items together, send that agenda out a couple days before the team meeting, and then just a few minutes here and there adding additional items to the agenda uh, before the next meeting. I'm interested, though, from um, all the participants today, what practices do you use to make your meetings more effective? So. Uh, what we're presenting today is uh, really based on the evidence of the research literature and meetings, uh, but I'm really interested to see what different activities your team is using uh, to help make uh, your meetings run really smoothly and effectively. Hello, Catherine, this is Lexington. Um, we offer free food. <laughs> That helps. <laughs> <laughs> that is helpful. That, I didn't include that in the webinar, but there is actually research that suggests that people enjoy meetings more when there is food at the meeting. Yes, yeah, so free food does help. I also want to comment on uh, an earlier, uh, we talked about what, what makes an effective meeting. Uh, we have a multidisciplinary process, probably most of us do, but we, it, it, it does become uh, much more uh, effective in the sense that we have different views different parts of the hospital. Uh, we're, we're represented by IT, by nursing, by pharmacy, by physical therapy. We get all these different kinds of uh, opinions and how we're going to approach certain issues, and that seems to be really uh, effective and helpful. Great. That's great to hear. 
And I think when people recognize that their input is valued and that their input actually results in change within the hospital, then that reinforces that uh, tendency to want to be part of that group, attend the meetings, because you recognize that your input is, is, is valued and helpful. No, definitely. Anyone else? Any other practices you'd like to share? This is Tracy in Fall City. This doesn't really uh, lead to more effective meetings, but we track our actions and we have a database. And after at least every other meeting, we go through that database to see where we are with all our uh, actions. And it really does hold people much more accountable when they know that at the end of the meeting, they're going to have to uh, tell us where they are with their project. Yeah, definitely I would agree. Um, it really facilitates, like you said, that accountability process, um, especially when you document it and then you actually go back and reflect on it. So it's one thing to have meetings and collect all that information, um, but actually then going through it, that's what really helps you to increase accountability for everyone on the team. That's a great idea, Tracy. Thanks for sharing that, that uh, tracking that in the database and revisiting that, the who's doing what when. Very similar to what we do with root cause analyses, tracking those actions taken. Okay, well, if there aren't any other, uh, you know, things that you would like to share, uh, the last thing we'd like to do before we let you go on this webinar um, is to talk about the remaining quarterly call meetings that we have. So we've conducted, is it two or three? At least two. At least two quarterly calls uh, with each of the fall risk reduction teams. So for the remaining quarterly calls with your team, uh, we would like you to send us your agenda prior to the meeting. Um, please feel free to send any minutes that you have from prior meetings um, or even your action plan. Um, some teams are using the action plans more than others, uh, but if your team is actively updating that action plan and keeping it up to date, uh, please feel free to send that to us as well before the meeting. And the first couple meetings, we've taken on kind of the leadership role to lead those quarterly calls with your team. And now we'd like to step back a little bit. We're um, happy to act as participants in your team, um, but we will not lead the meeting on this next meeting. So uh, we are there to participate in your meeting, to answer questions. But we would like your team uh, to send us that agenda and to lead those quarterly calls uh, where we can act uh, essentially as team members during your team meeting. And so the goal of this and the goal of those quarterly calls that we have is to really help us maintain that collaborative shared mental model of your fall risk reduction team's priorities and the progress that you're making. So are there any questions about um, our expectations for the remaining quarterly calls? This is Catherine, and uh, you can see a little bit of what Vicki's expertise is. It's really how do organizations effectively solve problems, and that's really her role here on our research team. Um, and uh, many of you that are involved in the Team Steps Teamwork Perceptions Questionnaire right now, um, that data will be part of uh, what Vicki is looking at for her dissertation project. So. Um, if you have questions that you think Vicki might be able to help you out with in terms of organizational effectiveness uh, relative to, to fall risk reduction or other uh, topics, you know, uh, you can email her and let her know. Um, and we're excited to have her as part of our team. Um, any other comments or questions, Vicki? No, I don't think so. I just want to thank you all for uh, listening into the webinar today, um, and hopefully you'll be able to take away some uh, tips about best practices for conducting effective meetings to make all the meetings that you attend more effective but also more enjoyable. And I will follow up, and what we will do is actually put our template for, conduct, for uh, our meeting minutes We'll put that template up on our website, as well as I will also uh, forward that to Garrett to make sure that he gets that. Um, are there any other questions? Uh, and I'm told by Anne to please remind you to complete the evaluation of the webinar uh, by clicking on the link uh, in the PowerPoint slides, or, or we will also send out a reminder email for you to uh, complete that evaluation. 
Based on those evaluations, we will update the webinars when they're placed on the website um, in the second year of the project. Uh, any other comments or questions? Yes. In one of those slides, it, uh, the meeting agenda that, example that you used, it, it talks about delirium bags. What's a delirium bag? Anybody want to speak up with that about what is a delirium bed? Uh, it looks like a bag, a delirium bag. Oh, that's, uh, I'll wait to see if anybody jumps on, but I know it's a bag put together by occupational therapy that includes items that tends to decrease the likelihood of delirium. Is anybody on the call that wants to address that specifically? Might include a calendar and some other things, but we'll find out about that and um, send that information out. Other comments or questions before we um, send you all along your way on this beautiful spring day? All right, thank you very much for your participation, and we look forward to continuing to work with you to collaborate and decrease the risk of falls in critical access hospitals. Everybody have an excellent day. Thank you.